Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. And welcome to our very first uh, webinar on trends in librarianship for library and information science educators and academic librarians. We're really pleased to have such a large number of attendees. My screen shows that we have 64 people right now. Uh, the people that uh, haven't been participating in webinars before, if you need to ask a question, there's a hand, you can click on a hand, we'll see that there's a hand. And if you want to chat, you can, you, there's a chat function, you can chat with everyone. And the webinar is being recorded, so you, I'm assuming we'll get the recording. So please try and mute your, uh, your mics so that we don't have any interference. Uh, we're gonna have a two day webinar for, uh, on this topic. It will be an hour today and an hour tomorrow on the 26th and on the 27th. I hope you all have seen the time zone. We have different time zones. Please make sure that you, you are ready and you check what at, at, at the actual time zone of your area. I don't want to take a lot of time. Uh, you've all read the, uh, the credentials of the speakers. Today we're gonna have Dr. Ayodele John Alonge. Uh, he's gonna talk to us about blended learning. In this webinar, we're gonna discuss what blended learning is. The concept of blended learning in library and information science. What is least students saying about blended learning using the University of Ibadan as a case study? We will discuss the blended learning outcomes, uh, challenges of blended learning. So I, without wasting too much time, uh, an hour is quite little. I will hand over to, my, uh, to our first speaker to take over. Over to you, Doctor. Oh, on the second day, we will have Dr. Marlene Homer, uh, who is a senior lecturer from the University of Pretoria. She will also uh, talk to you about blended learning. Okay, I don't need, need to take too much time of your webinar. Okay, over to you, our first speaker. Dr. Ayodale, are you there? Hello? Yeah, um, please keep Dr. Ayodele uh, two minutes. He'll start shortly. Oh, Thank he'll you. He'll start. Okay, he's okay. Anyone having any problems that you need help with? Okay, please? yeah, this is Dr. Ayodele, I'm on now. Okay, you thank you, Doctor. Over to you. I will yeah. just okay. okay, thank you very much, uh, Madam Moderator, for for starting this uh, webinar. And uh, this is a very big privilege for me to be part of this uh, development. Uh, as I said, I will be making my presentation uh, today, <coughs> and I will be looking at the basic concept of blended learning and possible models. And also in the course of this presentation, we're going to have a video show of the experience of students at the University of Ibadan that have gone through this kind of system. You know, if the video is, is okay, we can all watch the video. The video is available on, uh, on YouTube as well. Um, my presentation will be looking at technology mediated learning system. Uh, I'll be looking at blended learning um sorry i need to change my okay so can you see my powerpoint yeah yeah i'll be looking at the features of blended learning then also blended learning in library and information science then apart from that we'll be looking at different types of blended learning system um i don't know why my powerpoint is not moving uh, let me see can you see my powerpoint Sorry. Um, yes, Doc, everyone can see you. 
Yeah. yeah, because I can't move it to the next page. You can only see the first page. I want to go to the next page of my... Sorry, my name is... Can you see the PowerPoint now? Okay, can you all see the PowerPoint page? Yeah, this is fine. So I think okay. you can start your slide. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. So um, the purpose of this presentation is to relate my experiences in exploring application of mediated, technology mediated learning in teaching in library science. And apart from this, we also look at how we can also use this system in the library. And apart from that, we we're going to look at the, the educational and pedagogical aspect of, uh, I mean, relating to blended learning system. Before I go on, in the last couple of decades, we have really witnessed the outstanding development of new technologies, particularly information and communication technology. Consequently, this has led to the rise of information and knowledge society that impressively changing the way we live, the way we work together, the way we do everything, the way we bank, the way we worship, the way we eat. Technology has really changed this, including teaching and learning system, including library services. And uh, as we have this technology, and we can see the enormous advantages of this technology. Yet, we also see that people lack what is called uh, techno maturity in handling this. As we see the technology, on the other hand, this new technology also brings about numerous distractions to the flow of teaching and learning process. It has brought distraction to the flow of information dissemination. And if this is not well managed, you can see that there are some people are saying that library is not important again. I can get everything I need using social media. I cannot, I can even get my education just go, going online. So we need to now take advantage of this system so that we can stay important as librarians, as lecturers. In order to manage teaching and learning effectively, in order to also disseminate information to our users. We must, as librarians, academic librarians, as LIS educators, we must embrace technology mediated learning system. And that's brought the idea of this presentation. What do we understand by TML, which is technology mediated learning system? Technology mediated learning is a generic term which encompasses different teaching and learning approaches that is supported by the use of information communication technologies. Technology mediated learning has in several ways contributed significantly to the advancement of education globally, not only to education, advancement of everything we do. The advantages it offers are being leveraged by the government, and educational institutions world over to improve the quality and the quantity of education and library orientation and library trainings and literacy and so on and so forth with very minimal cost. And we can engage many people without even coming to the library. Without even coming to the classroom, we can pass our information across to them. And the, the focus of today, which is a blended learning system, is a form or is a type of technology mediated learning system that we, which we want to talk about. And this blended learning, what is blended learning? How do we define this? And it can come in any form. For example, now you can use a kind of combination of mixed modes, combination of various pedagogical approaches or any form of instructional technology, like maybe videotapes, CD, can also form, lead to blended. Blended is mixing things together, different types of uh, methods together for teaching. 
and also for library, library work. According to this call, 2002, there are many approaches by which blended learning can be attained. Number one, using the combination of mixed mode, which I've mentioned earlier, of web-based technology, such as a live virtual classroom, or self-paced instructions, or collaborative learning. You can also use a stream video, similar to what we are doing now, audio and text. Combined together, when you mix them together, it forms blended learning. The second one, which we, I want to mention now, is combine various pedagogical approaches. For example, now you can look at constructivism you know, in education with cognitivism together to produce an optimal learning outcome with or without the use of instructional technology. And the third one, and that is where we are, we, we are, we are, we are we, our brain learning focus on, which is uh, using instructional technology like videotapes, CD-ROM, web-based with face-to-face -face instructor led training. This time around, blend learning, which I want to, we're advocating in library or in LIS is the one whereby you use technology and also you use face-to-face. -face. And that's how we can catch our users anyway, better into, into, into classroom or into the library. Now, as I said earlier, what is blended learning? Blended learning or blended learning is, is, uh, is a blending of face-to-face -face instruction facilitated by a librarian or by a lecturer. That's a very simple definition I want to see because we are dealing with academic librarians, which are also uh, into teaching. Online learning materials, which might include pre-recorded lectures given by the same librarians or by the same lecturer are made available online, you know, whereby after facing your student face to face, you also engage them online so that the learning system can continue. Structured independent study time guided by the materials in the lectures and skills developed during the classroom experience a mixture of media and tools utilized in an e-classroom environment will give us what is called blended learning system. And you can see the diagram you, you are seeing on the screen, face-to-face -face learning, and we have online learning. And that's the mix, uh, in the middle, you can see it forms blended learning, which we are advocating for. And also, you can see blended learning feature, the features, what are the features of blended learning? Human is very, very important in blended learning system. And also technology is important. For example, human, maybe, maybe a lecturer or a librarian are there to form motivation. They help to, to give feedback. They help also to give the students or the library users discipline. And also it makes them to be able to select relevant information they need. In the other hand, technology. Technology allows mobility. For example, now, you may be in the, in, in, on the road, you, maybe you are traveling, and you have your phone that has internet service. You can continue getting information, be in the class and learn from, your, from, from what is happening without being in the spot. Not only that, maybe course materials, for example, instead of you printing them out, you can upload them online, whereby your, your, your users, library users, your students can assess this. And also it encourages what is called self-study. Students can study at their own pace. And also it's reduced cost. In a situation whereby you have a very large class, you need to get a bigger classroom and you cannot get it. You can use a blended learning, you know, by engaging them online. And also it encourages global reach. For example, as we are having this discussion, is a form of blended learning system. What we are discussing today we, is recorded, it's being recorded now, which can be shared globally. Anybody that even you are not available in the class now, you can have access to this later. So that's a very good feature we are talking about in blended learning. More other features I want to mention is time management, responsibility for learning. You know, time management is very important. You know, you, when you are using blended learning, you won't speak out, I mean, you, you won't go out of time. 
you'll be able to say, oh, I want to make this presentation in 15 minutes. And the system will encourage you to do this. It's helps time, time management. Now, what is not blended learning? You know what we see in the, let's say, early 90s, you know, even in the olden days, classroom, those people are there without no technology. It's not blended learning, the traditional factory model. Then also, when you see a system also whereby you just have systems, computers, and they are just doing online alone, like just having computers, uh, we, we call it a tech-rich traditional model. It's not blended learning system. So now, what are, as I've given the definition earlier, I want to now focus on the six types or models of blended learning. It depends on where, what you want to do. And each model is not limited. You can't say, though, I must, I must use this one, or I must not use this one. Selection of the models to use, the, the, it depends on the nature of your, or, or the features of your students, or the features of your library, or the availability of, your, of the resources. Now, the first one, which I would mention, is called face-to-face -face driver. Face-to-face -face driver, as we've seen this, is that online learning, which whereby is dedicated on a case-by-case -by, -case by the instructor as a supplement to the curriculum. In this one, not all the students will be involved in this. For example, now, you are a lecturer, or as a librarian, you've done library orientation, and some users who are not there. You can just get their details, and you engage them online, whether using uh, some application like Edmodo, or you use Easy Class, or even you use WhatsApp group, and you share the materials, and you work with them. It's, not, it's just face to face, and also it's case by case. That's number one. Number two. It's called flex. Online instruction is primary and is supplemented by on-site personal support through tutoring or small groups. So this one is a very good example for, for like in Nigeria, we have a distant learning program. Uh, we call it uh, Open University. This is a very good example. Here, the major element of the learning is online. The students, are, are, they don't need to come to the classroom and they're having their degree. What they do is that they meet online, but from time to time, they can form a kind of tutorial groups to enhance what they're learning online. And this time around, that meeting one-on-one -on -one is not compulsory. The basic, what is very important is the online instruction. So that's another one. Create a guided yet safe determined an heavily personalized atmosphere to achieve the goal. Then the third one, which is called online driver. Online driver. In this case, the entire course is delivered through an online platform with possible teacher check-in. So the, the independent student requires flexibility. You know, in the case whereby it's just independent, students are there, and this one allows students who need independent and flexible study hours. Like in my university, we have this system in my university, which we call distance learning. So the course is delivered on an online platform, you know, and from time to time, the, 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 the instructor may be around to see what they are doing and to guide them if they have questions. So that's one. The third, I mean, the fifth, fourth one, which I will mention is online lab, online lab. Courses are taught entirely online, but it is bricks and mortar location and supervised by an adult. What we are saying here is this. Instead of giving the students flexibility of connecting online on the, I mean, by themselves, for the online lab, they have a classroom that has computers, and the students will need to come to this classroom and learn under the supervision of a trained uh, teacher or a lecturer, somebody will be there to guide them, you know, to, to, to monitor what they are doing. But they must come to that uh, environment at that particular time. So that's online lab. Then the, the other one, which is the rotation. Rotation. In this, in this one, students move on a fixed schedule between traditional classroom instruction and self-paced online. 
what we are saying, this is the example I use for my students in the University of Ibadan, the LI students. What we do is that we have a classroom and we have a lecture time, timetable. After teaching in the class, then in a particular time, the students also are engaged online, whereby they can also get connected, you know, and they learn, learn online. This is very, uh -huh. very ideal for a standard uh -huh. classroom. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, sorry to cut me, but please, it looks like the feedback we are getting from your, your slides, the PowerPoint is, is, is uh, far behind where you have gotten to. So if you can oh, make it synchronized so that the participants can Oh, follow. thank you very much. Yes, yes. Uh, ap apology, apology. Um, uh, um, I thought I set it automatically and it's not moving. Yeah, I'm on face-to-face. -face. I've discussed face-to-face -face driver. I've discussed flex, as you can see on the PowerPoint. The next one is online driver, which I've discussed, you know, whereby the entire course is delivered through an online platform and also online lab whereby the, the, the learners need to come to a particular location and they need to work at that particular time. And the next one is rotation. Can you all see that now, rotation? So here, students move on a fixed schedule between traditional classroom instruction and self-paced online learning. So, and I've, I said that this is what I use for my students at the University of Ibadan. We have a lecture time, two hours in a week. Students will come to the classroom, no technology during this period. And after that, I engage them online after the class, maybe in a particular time, maybe 7 p.m. We give them time and they submit their assignments online. And also they made the discussion online. And the last one, the last one, which is number six, is self-blend, self-blend. This is an example where we have uh, students have the option to take online course to enhance their traditional classroom learning. This one on their own, after teaching the classroom, the lecturer will encourage them that you can go online to look for uh, MOOC, all these massive open online uh, courses, whereby they can learn, learn further on what they have been taught in the classroom. And I know many of us, we, we do this self-blended blended learning system. And also, we can also encourage our library users to do this. Now, what is the place of blended learning in library and information science? And this includes in library, I mean, in the library system as well. Because library is a, uh, being an academic librarian, you have responsibility also to impact knowledge to, to, to teach. Over the years, as we know, LI's departments, even the library, teachers, students, have adapted new technology in order to bring best teaching and learning method and application to their classes. Today, LI sector is deeply rooted in digital technology. You know that if you, uh, if you pass through LI's course and uh, you don't, you are not uh, you are not good in technology, There's li you, you are likely not to get a job because LIS, Library Information Technology, is embedded or works together with technology. So as we know, library science is an in interdisciplinary science that incorporates humanities, laws, and others. And uh, when we use this method, it will enable, because the limited time we have in the class, we not will not be sufficient for us to teach everything we want to teach. And also you can know, even the, 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 the curriculum content we, we have in our allies today, some in some university is outdated. For students now to graduate and to be able to compete with the, their counterparts from other parts of the world, even from other universities, you should, the students should go beyond what is being taught in that class. That's the reason why we encourage blended learning in LIS. So now, from my experience in using blended learning, these are some of the things I made use of. I taught a course on technology and another one on, um, I think, uh, on uh, library marketing using social media. So making use of 
at blended learning, it, it, it gave me the opportunity to, to create my content, to make my content delivery interactive and also individualized. What, what am I saying here is this. I have my course content. I made it available on my forum online. My students had opportunity to contribute, to say that, oh, sir, we can also have this content, we can have this and that, which I made it open for them. Apart from that, I had the opportunity to give them quiz from time to time to assess what they have learned, whether I'm following, whether I'm teaching them properly or they are, uh, uh, they are, uh, they are assimilating well or not, using uh, quiz, using um, exam, I mean, uh, assessment online. There's a platform whereby I sent set, set questions online to, for them and they were able to submit these questions I mean, the answers online. I was able to grade them online. So through this, blend learning system enhanced teaching and learning in LIS. Not only that, as a librarian also, I was able to use this blend learning to also engage my users, you know, you know to give them some literacy skills, searching skills, and so on and so forth. Not only that, looking at collaboration, with this also through my, my the system I used, for them. I was able to engage them and also encourage them to comment, to post information, to debate online, and I'm grading them and they are being graded based on what they are doing. And not only the grades that's beneficial to them, it also encourages them to, to, it also facilitates their learning. For example, some people are shy, they won't be able to talk in the classroom, but online you can see them, they, they, are, they, are, they, they are very vocal you know, online, they, they will be able to comment to say one or two things. Then the third one, which I see is that the system also allows me to administer my, uh, I mean, to, to manage my class. For example, now in terms of uh, class attendance, what I do for them is that after the class, I will put on a kind of quiz based on what we have learned in the classroom. And I expect all of them to respond to that quiz. Even just to like, through that like or their comments, I know that those people that attend the classroom. So, and apart from that, grading system also is very easy for me. You know, after giving them series of assignments, submitting online, at the end, the system was able to aggregate the discourse and give me the percentage. So it, it does a lot of things. And uh, this is a sample of what I use for them. I use a platform called Edmodo. Edmodo is a free online platform. It's a free learning management system for educators. So, and it's, as, it's very easy to use. It's similar to, you can see the platform, how it looks. It looks as if, like, like a Facebook. And you know our users love Facebook. They love uh, chatting and so on. So it gives them the room to chat. You know, the course is called LI712 information technology, and they can chat, they can also post information, they can ask questions through this. Edumodo, you can try this. You can use it for both for teaching as a lecturer and also as academic librarian, you can make use of Edumodo. Edumodo. And it's free of charge, you don't need expert training before you can use this. As I said, these are the features of Edumodo, user-friendly, it looks like Facebook, you know, app. It also have, uh, it has a, uh, app Store, it is on App Store, or if you're using iPhone, you can download it and you, use, you, you can do, use it as quickly as possible. The student can also upload their work directly to the site. And also, it doesn't take much, much data, you know, but it's very light. Though, apart from that, it has its own disadvantage also. If you are a lecturer, it shows that you need to be creating this platform from time to time, every semester, you know, and so on. And apart from that, this is another example of a learning management system that you can use uh, in the library and also as a lecturer. It's called Easy Class. Easy Class is very cheap. I mean, it's very easy to use as well. You don't to pay. You don't pay anything to use this. It's very similar to the first one, Edumodo. But the only disadvantage of this one is that it doesn't have a mobile app. 
Students cannot download the app on their mobile phone, but it's very easy to use. And also to join also is not difficult. So uh, in closing, you can see some of the advantages, uh, some of the uh, outcome I saw when I use this with them. Now, the first one is that using uh, uh, better learning with students, you, you know, it, it helped them to engage participation and engagement, you know, which is it described instructors frequency of improvement and level of interest in online content sharing. So I engaged them and they, 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 they were able to share their content online. And apart from that personalized, you create your group based on the need of your users. You know, so you, you create it based on the needs of your users. You know, so the, apart from this, the next one, which is a, it also facilitates uh, learning. So that's some of the instructional behavior. Being an instructor, these are the things, the benefit I see using a blended learning system. Then on the student's side, they are also their behavioral development. For example, now they were able to do peer interaction. It encourages what is called peer interaction. And also it encourages equal participation. Through blended learning system, students, because you've told them that you, they must contribute online, nobody will dominate. In the classroom, there's a, uh, uh, there's a time that somebody can be dominating uh, the question and answering period. But here, because they know that the instructor is looking at them and also is grading them based on what they are saying. So with this, it encourages it encourage them to participate. Then also for education, the benefit to education, you know, it encourages peer-to-peer -peer learning and also it also promotes student control. Student can control the content can control what they want to learn. And also, apart from that, connection to practice. We know in, in library science, nowadays, the library is beyond just a traditional system whereby you look at books. You, you use computers. So when you make use of this system to teach your student in a classroom, or use the system to, to engage library users, library user will be very fluent in using technology as a result. They won't, they, they won't be, uh, technology will not be, will not be strange to them at the end. So now, what are the students saying about this? I have the video. I don't know if uh, we can, we still have time to show that video. But if we don't have that time, I'm looking at my time now. I, I encourage us, we're going to share the video link. It's on YouTube. You can watch this video. They can just summarize what my students said about using blended learning system. I interviewed the class rep in particular. The class rep, the class rep, rep was able to say that blended learning system has helped him to manage the students very well. Because he doesn't need to run after the student to submit the assignment or to tell them the, the closing time for the assignment. Because the, the system will remind them of the closing time, the deadline for the assignment, and also when the assignment, when the time elapses, nobody can submit again. Nobody will be going to class rep, be begging. Nobody will be begging class rep, oh, please, collect this assignment because it's a system base and also it's time based. So with this, the class rep will be able to manage the class very well. Not only that, a particular student said that instead of them, I mean, uh, taking the stress of writing in the class, a lecturer will come to the class dictating to them. We don't, we no longer have to do this again. We don't dictate. What we do is that to upload the materials online. So through that, a student or students can go online anytime in the comfort of their room and download these materials on their phone or on their laptop and read. So that's another advantage. Not only that, I also have a kind of a comment from a particular student that said that, they don't need to you know as, that some students they ask them uh, some lecturers. They ask them to print out the assignment, maybe ten pages, twenty pages, and it's very expensive for students to do. What we do using blended learning system is that to ask students to upload the assignment online. So this one is very effective for students. They don't need to 
uh, to use much money to, uh, to print assignments and be looking for lecturer to submit the assignment. All they need to do is that to upload the assignment anytime they want and the, the lecturer will also grade and they see the results. So the video will be shared and all participants will be able to see that video. Uh, so if you have comments on that, you can, you can give us later. Um, using blended learning is not the end of everything. The this is a journey, not a destination. So it takes time to transform thinking and teaching. Though we have a lot of barriers, which another speaker will speak on this tomorrow, disadvantages, acceptability on this, but we should not get discouraged because as we are going, especially in this, in this kind of country we are, in this kind of continent we have, whereby technology, uh, though it's very, it's well accepted, but some, that we have some limitations, some, uh, some limitations in using technology. So yet we should not get discouraged, we should use technology uh, by so doing, you know, we can, we can, we'll be able to do better as academic librarians and also as LIS educators. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Doctor, for an insightful presentation. Um, I think you should ask questions to all the students who have been uh, chatting and sending questions to us while you are still lecturing to, so that we can see if they've absorbed in anything. <laughs> anyway, you, uh, we, you have told us that the blended learning would assist the student to work on their own self in a self-paced uh, time. At, at their own time, it, it, they choose when to, engage, when to engage with the material that has been given to them. Uh, you, there is, there's been questions that have been asked. I'm not sure if you will have the time to, you will be able to answer them. One of the uh, participants asked, how can he do this as um, he's a, an information librarian and he wants to use it in, information, in, informa in teaching students information literacy? I'm not sure if you can indulge him and answer. Okay, uh, the question I see here is it the one explain more on how I can use it to teach information literacy skills? Hello? Well, if, if, that, if that is the question, please explain more on how I can use it to teach information literacy skills. As a librarian, you have the record of your library users. You have their phone numbers, you have their emails. All you need to do is to, to create a kind of platform for them, maybe using Edmodo or Easy Classroom, and you invite them to join. So through that, you can upload your, your, your content, you know, and also you, through this, they can make discussion and teach them, or you can even do a video recording of your, of your lecture or of your training on literacy skills and upload, them, upload, upload that online. So I think as a, as, a, as a librarian, you can use it that way. Thank you. Over to you, Madam Moderator. Over to you, Madam Moderator. Well, I, I think I can continue. I can see some questions here as well. There's a question from, Fa, uh, I can't pronounce this name, Fahabo. Yeah, you are asking that you are interested in the Edumodo platform. But I would like to know whether the lecturer, which is the admin, has the access to backup files of students' assignments and assignment records. records. Yes, as a, if you create Edumodo account, so you will, you, as a, you are the admin, as a lecturer, you are the admin. So you can always go back, you know, and assess all the, all the, all the, uh, uh, the, the result, I mean, the answer of your students. You can as well download them as a PDF on your system. Yeah.
Okay, uh, do you see any, does anyone have any more questions? Can you see any questions that coming to you, doctor? Yes, I can see another question, Madam Moderator. Okay, you can, you, you can answer the questions, then I'll unmute myself. Okay, a question from Eze Godwin Sunday. Sir, please, how do you schedule your time with the students, bearing in mind that there are other courses holding on traditional basis? Yes, you know, uh, the work of a lecturer or academic librarian, you know, it requires you to know how to manage your time. You have that platform, you know, after that, you know, you have other traditional cl I mean, classes, which you need to engage, or maybe as a librarian, you need to attend to people. So all you need to do is that you can just have a kind of timeline that maybe in the evening, I want to respond to my students. In the evening, I want to post uh, information to my students. And also, you can also pre preload those information and set, set the time that this information, I want it to come up early in the morning, the second day. So with that technology, with the, with the technology like Edmodo, Easy Class and others, it will give you opportunity to be able to manage your time and also to attend to other things, even your personal life as well. Thank you very much. Yes, I have another question here. Okay. I said, please enlighten me on how I can use this tech for orientation. Is this similar to what I have mentioned earlier? You know, orientation comes maybe at the beginning of the, of, of the semester. So when you want to, you know, your orientation, you have, you ask the student to come to classroom, I mean, to the library. You engage them in the library. So what you need to do is that you make sure maybe, maybe during this presentation, you record like a video recording for your students. Well, after recording, you cannot upload the videos on the, on the learning platform, whereby from time to time, your student can go back and check and go back and check. This is a kind of blended one. And if you want it to be a total technology alone without coming to the, to the class, you can also engage them by creating a kind of account for each of these students and they join online. So with that, they can ask you questions. You can tell them so so time, maybe two o'clock or so, so so day, I will be online to answer questions. So you can use it for, for, for search. So I think I've, uh, I've answered some of these questions. Uh, Madam Moderator, maybe somebody wants to ask another question. Over to you. There is, uh, I think we have about 22 questions and I think we can't go through all of them. I think you can just go through the questions and, and pick up a few. Uh, one thing that I, I can say to everybody online is, can we continue with the discussions? I can see there's people who are on the chat answering each other and, and discussing. We can continue discussing this on the, we have um, academic library uh, group uh, I will invite everybody and then we can probably just deal with some of the questions there. We have active Facebook groups. We can continue dealing with the questions offline. But I will allow you to probably pick three or four questions quickly and then just answer them for... I see some of them are a repetition of what you have already uh, answered. There's questions about plagiarism. There's questions about whether the video can be reused. Some people want to use it to, to uh, teach their students. So, okay. Can you see all the questions on your side? Yes. yes, I can see some questions there and some are very interesting. Yeah, there's just pick one. a few interesting yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's one, I think from Adigun. And it's similar to the one from, uh, from James Ayek Bilehi. You know, I know they, they are from this country, Nigeria, and they, they are looking at the limitation we have in Nigeria, especially in terms of electricity. You know, somebody says, I, I hope you are aware of some of the technological and power issues we are facing in this side of the world. Yes, Nigeria, especially, you know, electricity, and people are surprised about this. We, are, we, we look at like giants, but we are not really giants anyway, you know, in terms of electricity failure we have. So to me, that should not debar or that should not uh, stop us from using technology. 
you know, students, as you teach them, though they may be having challenges of technology, I mean, electricity, for example, you can still see them engage on uh, Twitter, on Facebook, and also on Instagram. I know if you make it uh, very important to them, they will find a way of charging their phone and they will use technology. They go extra mine, you know, charging their phone, having power bank and so on. So I think that should not be the problem. We should not say that because we have these challenges, especially in Nigeria, we should not do this. So there another one from James is asking about the, also the poor internet infrastructure in Nigeria. Our internet service is very poor here in Nigeria. That's one, that how should you, should you use this? I'm speaking for, in Nigeria, I'm in Nigeria right now. I'm in, in Ibadan right now. And I'm using the internet here, though I go extra mile, I have to get 4G internet. Though it is more expensive, but yet, we see how if you have your money, and if you want education as you want it, the quality one, you should be able to go extra mile to get a quality internet, you know? So, and at the end, you'll be happy with it. And also, another question says that, what about they don't have money to buy Android phone? Who, who tells you that? Students, even they use better phone than lecturers, they use better phone than, than, than librarians. So though we can have some, 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 some exceptions. For example, in my class, master's class for, for that matter, somebody was saying, she doesn't have phone to use. I was surprised anyway, but I said, you don't have phone, you should go and look for a desktop laptop, I mean, a desktop uh, computer, which you can also, uh, you can connect to. So you, I know this difficulty will come, but yet, Education is not cheap. Education is not cheap. Students should go extra mile to buy Android phones, you know, uh, to get better uh, internet service. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, uh, there's another one. I, there's one about plagiarism. Uh, I think you can answer that. And then there's, there's one who wanted to reuse the, the information. Sorry, uh, that, that plagiarism, can you, I can't find the, okay, yeah. Uh, is if um, the presenter also has a good presentation? Okay, may, may I know what license copyright it has? Is that that one? Yes, you can answer that one, and there's another one also. On Maybe you read, that, you read that to me. You know, yeah, the license, you know, there's a, is a freeware application. It's open, open source application. So, and there's some application which are, they will allow you to, to tailor it down, I mean, based on your own environment. You know, you can get IT experts to make it available, you change some things, so it can be available in your institution. I know, I believe the, the second speakers will be mentioning on this tomorrow, it will be speak, she will be speaking on this tomorrow, because in their institution, they have the one which they tailor for their own institution. Uh, can I use it to teach my under level information literacy class in a modified form? Yes. You can use it. Like, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a class I teach in this university in the Badon here. It's on that level, and I use it with them, and they're happy. You know, even it's, it's, it's better for with young learners because they, they, are, more, uh, they are more techy or they are more uh, technology literate than the adults. So I think it's good. Uh, Madam Moderator, you can ask me the other question. Uh, there's one so, said, does blended learning have implication for other forms of learning? That's, one, that's another one. Uh, what are the ethical issues to be observed in blended learning? I think this will also be answered tomorrow. But tomorrow, yeah. yeah. I, I think the other one, which is uh, the implication on others. Sincerely, blended learning will enhance or is enhancing or is, it has enhanced traditional learning system. Because let me tell you something. Today's learner, they are very impatient. Today's learners, before even you teach them, they've gone online to know what you want to teach. So tell me, why do you want to waste your time to engage them in the classroom? Why you can give them opportunity to contribute to the content? Why you can give the opportunity to, to, to stay in their comfortable environment because they like that environment, you know, Web 2.0. They love that environment. At times you see them in the class, they will be sleeping. But when they are online, they'll be more active because they love social media. <coughs> they love that kind of environment. And you can engage them, you catch them where they are. They are. Uh, so it's, it's, it brings positive uh, 
uh, positive, uh, uh, positive or positive. I mean, it brings advantage to traditional learning. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm trying to be fair. I'm going to the chat room and see what people are talking about. Okay, there's one that I guess this blended learning may not be comfortable for a traditional group of learners. Learners that prefer physical material as preferred method of learning. Hmm, I have an answer, but I'll let you answer that one. Yes, uh, yeah, you, you, you are right. You know, there are some people, they are, they are technophobia. You know, they, they're still very afraid of technology. But sincerely, I believe that the learners we have today, you know, they are not technophobia. Even from their secondary school, from their high school, they have been using technology. Even to write examination, uh, entry examination to, to university, they make use of CBT. So why, you know, for, for, for that kind of people, to me, technology, Edumodo and others will be acceptable platform for them. But for the older generation, yes, I agree, it will not be comfortable for some of them. So, but our focus sincerely nowadays, even our library, especially academic librarians, we deal with young generations. We deal with uh, people that are, that are not technophobia. They don't have, they, they're not afraid of technology. So that's my, my contribution on that. Okay, uh, in the chat, there's someone who says, as a student, I think it's more of a comment. As a student, now I understand better. One of my lecturer did use this method. It is very interesting and interactive. Ev everyone did well in the end because we were, we were, we've been granted a week based on our participation. Mm. It was a bit competitive. It was strange. So it took us a while to adapt. But some of us had issues concerning feasibility of online, such as lack of technology device, lack of funds to buy data, and so on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I, I like that. Yeah. I think I, I have a comment from uh, Nelson Edward. Nelson Edward, I think, is, a, is a, yeah, it's from here. He said, Dr. Alonge, are you advocating total replacement of former traditional classroom system with technology? No, no, no. I'm not doing that. I'm not advocating for total replacement. I'm just saying that we should enhance traditional learning system with technology. Enhancement. And that enhancement, based on what Madam Speaker, Madam Moderator just said now, you can see, it makes, like, even I'm marking some scripts now of my students, and I'm so amazed, the, the kind of, the, the quantity and the quality of their, uh, of their response to my questions, because I use the, I use uh, blended learning to teach them, and I allow them to contribute to the content of that learning. So thank you. I think this one, I'll just summarize. It says, please, how do I, I use blended learning uh, platform to lecture in a polytechnic? where blended learning is yet to be of officially adopted by management. I think this is about how do they advocate, how do they make sure that the yes, institution uh, uses it? Yes, you know, you know, let me tell you something. The institution, your university, your polytechnic, or your library, uh, you, sh you should not wait for them to, to make it as a policy that you should use it before you use it. Since you are not going away from teaching and learning process as you are employed to do, you are still teaching and you are, you are learning. You are just trying to bring something that will enhance that process. You know, so through that, sincerely, you don't need to wait for the university policy before you can do this. So when they see what you are doing, sincerely, they will come to you that you should come and even help us to develop this, this content come and educate other people. And you become a kind of very important person in your, in, your, in your school because you are bringing technology, you are bringing innovation to what you are doing. Okay, I think I can add to what you've just said. I think in my library, we the library actually started using blended learning before the whole school adopted it. By the time oh, wow. we got on board, we were way ahead of them. 
So it can be done. You can start in the library. You can start in your in your uh, department to to adopt it. Okay, I have another question for you. Okay, somebody asked, uh, 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 um, do you advocate for total um, <laughs> blended learning? We have hybrid learning. You can you have to mix both. Like we've been saying that there are students who are still who still want their own methods of, of, of uh, learning where I need my book, I still need a teacher in front of me. You know, there, there is a hybridity and then you can have flipped classrooms. So these are things, are the concepts that I think on the follow up uh, webinar, we can look at and explain them to, uh, to our, you, uh, to our attendees, are you up for the challenge, Doctor? Come again, please. No, I, I, I said. The, I said that we there is hybridity. There is flip le, uh, flipped classrooms. There's different yes. ways of using blended learning. Of you course, know? different ways. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm saying to everyone, these are some of the concepts. Maybe we can look at later. How do you actually uh, use blended learning in your class? The different methods you have mentioned them, but you mentioned them in passing. I think uh, we should have maybe some sort of a follow up. What is hybrid? What is a flip at classes? Things like that, so that we help the people who haven't started as yet. Yeah, I, I think uh, yes, you, you are right. I think at the end, this is not the end of the lecture. We are also meeting tomorrow, and also after tomorrow, there's a platform which a Dr. A came has created which we engage the discussion, the discussion goes on. You know, it goes on. I have a question here, which I would like to answer from David. He was asking about copyright issue. You know, that anything free may not be free. You know, maybe they, are keep, they, are, they may be stealing your resources. Sincerely, I will encourage that if your university has a, I mean, a policy on this, you can also create your own blended learning platform that also that will be, that will be dom uh, domiciled in your university, whereby you can have control over the content you are sharing. So with this one, you'll be able to avoid uh, people stealing your resources, you know, or copyright issues. Yeah, okay. that's uh, David. I, okay. answered this. I have the last question. I think we're running out of time. Do you think various technology can be able to accommodate various learning styles? Come again, please. Do you think various technology can be able to accommodate ver various learning styles of students? I think. Yeah. Well, if I if I want to, if I should understand that question, uh, I think uh, the, maybe the, the speaker, I mean the uh, the person is asking that. Maybe we have a, what is called a, a peculiarity, though know, that is maybe a particular technology will be fit to this student than the others, which, uh, yeah, which I mentioned earlier, which is the online, I mean, the first one, which is online driver. You know, you use technology based on the need of the users. Or you can even say that, oh, you want to use a WhatsApp for my class based on the nature or the, the features of your students. So uh, if, if I may get that question right, various okay. technology could be used for various teaching styles. Or, or maybe you are teaching, you want to teach oral literature, for example, the kind of platform you use will be different from when you are teaching mathematics or when you are teaching uh, maybe ICT in the library. So, you know, you, it, it's not just everything that we are discussing here or everything we read, you just assimilate that way. You just need to look at your users, look at your students, your environment before you decide on which one to use and which one not to use. Okay, thank you very much. I think we've got, oh, we run out of time. Thank you very much, everybody, for logging in. I know you've taken away time away from your work. And um, I hope this was useful. And we would like to have you all, all the 105 of you tomorrow, the 37 questions. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>